For my quick research guide, I have a file on my computer where I collect all the informational documents and where I keep my Excel tables. I have a folder for different categories uh, such as all about names or census information, a handwriting folder. I have maps and geography, just probably the same as everybody else. Uh, one thing that I've found is I, uh, it's been immensely valuable for me to use Excel tables when I recorded information for my research log. And being able to sort and find information on my fingertips in a searchable format has been a great time saver for me. So naturally, when I developed or learned that skill, I extended it to my quick research guide. So I'm going to share a little bit of what I'm doing, what I'm in the process of doing with you um, when it comes to my Excel tables. Last year when my son first taught me how to use Excel tables, I had a ton of fun starting um, my learning process uh, with a table that I call All About Names. So I'm going to show that to you real quick so you can just get an idea of how I use my, re my Excel tables to help me with my research. So I started out just gathering names and I put them into this table. So I have the nickname, the proper name, the gender, and any um, official abbreviations that they have used over the years. Um, and then over here is some of my cheats that I was using because I was just learning how to use Excel. So I have a, over 3,000 entries and um, there's not 3,000 names, it's just those entries. Some of them are duplicates because the spelling is differently. So I've accounted for all the different spellings and I just want to show you how, how I use it. So let's just say I'm researching somebody with the first name of Elizabeth. So I go to my proper name um, column, and if I push in this little arrow, it will give me a, a filter. And on this filter, I'm just going to type in Elizabeth. Oh, okay. It's hard to type under pressure. <laughs> okay, so here I have all of my nicknames listed for Elizabeth. So, uh, as you can see, there's quite a few, so that might be helpful to me if I was doing my research on somebody named Elizabeth. I could watch for all the different names that have been used um, back in the day for, for the proper name of Elizabeth. Let's just say I come across a document uh, where she is continually re referred to as Liz. So I'm going to clear this filter, and I'm going to go to the nickname category now, and I'm going to type in... Liz. And as you can see, quite a, quite a few different variations come up that have Liz in them. And so that could be a good way for me to keep my mind open to all the different possibilities of what a person who is called Liz on a document might be um, named or names that are associated with Liz. So I started using, um, after I got this document done. I started using my Excel tables to do my research logs and I found it just saved so much time. So naturally that led me into using the Excel tables for uh, my quick research guide. And last year I also started some guides that I've used uh, for each state. So I'm calling this the Mid-South State County Info, and I have a tab down here for each state that's in the Mid-South, and I don't have them all done yet. I'm still working on it, but I just went through um, on the Wiki or on um, Wikipedia and different sites where I could find the information, and I just started entering. So I have information about the name of the county, the county it originated from what the county seat is, other towns that may be in that county, the year it was established, or um, if it was abolished, that year would be here. And then I have the current population. This is helpful because I can kind of see what the population centers are in each state. And then I have an area right here. And what I did with this is if you look at maps about the different geographical areas of each state, it will say, oh, this is the bluegrass area, or this is the 
the, the knobs area or whatever the case may be. And they're all a little bit different, so I just kind of picked what I thought made the most sense to me after learning about the geography. So doing this has helped me learn the geography. If I wanted to say, okay, Louisville is in the bluegrass area, let me see what all is in the bluegrass area. So in my filter, I can type in bluegrass. And that will bring up everything that says bluegrass. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of different bluegrass areas, so that means I need to put this in quotes. And then I can see specific, the specific area called bluegrass. And then it just helps me see, and I can go over here and look at the different counties that are in that area. So if I wanted, let's say somebody was in Louisville, but I wanted to see what the surrounding counties were, I could look at it here. And it's just kind of been a fun way for me to learn about each state. So the next one I want to show you is my actual quick research guide. And what I've titled this one is Vital Stats at a, at a Glance. And um, I have a quick, ref, a quick glance guide that has every state on it right here. So it tells me I can look at see the statehood. As you can see, I don't have it all finished. I'm still working on it. Then I can do and look and look at the births real quick and when they were started in the state or um, and then I have restrictions. So if I wanted to order a birth certificate, I know that I can't. I can look at this quickly and find out that I can't order it in Kentucky or Missouri for 100 years. And in North Carolina and South Carolina, I can never order it unless I'm a close family member. So I would have to find a close family member to actually order those. Um, and then I have information about marriages and divorce and death as well on that one. Then I got more specific and I have a tab down here for each one of my states. And I can, I, what, how I organized this was by the state and the event. And then this column reminds me of the official date of the statewide registration. This column rem, um, gives me information about the specifics when the counties possibly were collecting records. And then this is the title of the database, the repository it's in, the form it's in. Um, this is if I know a researcher in that area that I've used that I can ask them to do lookup for me. And then this column gives me ordering information. So the one I'd like to show you Let's go to this one down here. So I can just click on my box and I can highlight it. And I pull up a Google page, put it in the bar and paste it, and hit return. And that will take me to that database that I so I can search it. I also have at the bottom, I have Another tab that is for US, US um, databases. So this one right now is sorted for marriages. So I'm going to unsort that because there's something else I wanted to show you. Down here at the bottom for deaths, I put a little note to myself that says CSC US databases tab for more ideas. So there's a lot of US databases that are overlap. So if you're going to look up the Social Security Index, you wouldn't do it for Kentucky, you do it for all of the US. And so I have those on a separate tab. So over here I can look up um, death. I don't have a lot of them put in this one yet, but here's death, here's the Social Security Index. I could just highlight that and paste it into a Google Sheet and I would be right at that database. So that is how I've been doing my quick research guide. I hope you were able to learn something and I hope this was a little bit informative. Thank you.